Captive Portal. So Captive Portal, the idea was we had a lot of feedback that people wanted to be able to enforce certain things before people could get online and access to the Internet. Uh, so the common use cases for this were like, I want to display a message that has acceptable use policy before people can sign on and browse the web. Or I want people to log in so I know who they are and they can get the correct policy. Or I want to even charge for Internet or things along those lines. Um, so Captive Portal is basically a way to do that. Let me log into a machine real quick. So this machine is actually set up on our network um, in front of the wireless access point. So on our network, all the wireless hosts are being captured. Um, and let me walk through the settings so I can give you an idea of what you can do with Captive Portal. Uh, so the first tab is Captive Host. That basically means who you want to capture. Uh, in this case, we want to capture everybody on the internal interface. We only have one rule. That's because the internal interface actually connects to our wireless access point. So in this case, everybody is going to be captured on the internal interface. But you can set up all sorts of different rules about times a day or certain subnets, uh, days a week, and things along those lines. Uh, so you can really cut and piece together exactly who you want to be captured. Uh, also, you can choose to capture bypass traffic or not. Depending on your bypass rules, you may or may not want to do that. And then there's the exception list, which is past hosts. Occasionally, you'll run across somebody in the, say, inside that you just don't want to have captured. So you can ask them. You can add them here. They won't be subject to the captive portal. They can just go right to the Internet. They won't be asked to log in or accept any use policy or anything like that. And then the past listed server address. Um, that is basically servers that you want users to be able to reach no matter what, even if they're not authenticated. So let's say I connect my laptop to our wireless access point. I can get to these sites without having authenticated. Uh, it's useful to put servers in here like DNS, um, or if you do anything fancy on the captive page, put servers that are required for the authentication process in here. I'm going to talk about the captive page first. Um, so there's a couple different options. Um, the one we're using here is basically a basic page that says you are accepting Untangle's terms and conditions for wireless use by using this. And then you have to click an agree checkbox. It looks like this, basically. If I go to a website, if I go to CNN.com, this is what I'm going to see. And what I have to do is click here and click Continue. And then all of a sudden, I'll be redirected to Untangle, and then I can go to CNN.com after that. So that's one common use case. Another common use case is you want people to log in. So you can actually choose Basic Login. That's going to give you a very similar looking page, but it's going to ask for username and password. And the way that you determine whether the username and password is, is valid is you have one of three user authentication methods. You can use the local directory. The local directory basically is on Untangle. You can add in, you know, Dean Morris and my password. You can set up every user individually. Or you can use Radius or Active Directory if you have Directory Connector. Uh, and then a couple options along how long did the logins last. You get timed out. The log out pop-up button basically pops up a button that allows you to log out by pressing the button. Allowing concurrent logins, that means multiple people with the same login credentials. And then you can go over here and see in real time you know, who's using the network and who's not. If, in, in our case, we're actually just using basic message, so there is no username because everybody's just agreeing. But you can see exactly who's agreed when. And you can also see what traffic's being blocked. Um, because those users are not authenticated. So here you can see this, this machine is trying to talk and the user hasn't accepted the, the uh, terms and, and agreements yet. So that's the basic idea behind Captive Portal. really allows you to, to lock down your network. If you do have Directory Connector, one of the nice things is, is when you log in as a user, if you're using basic login, that username will be mapped to that IP. So you can do policies by that username, and you will get reports by that username if you have Directory Connector. 